Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and this is truly a historic moment. Ripple has announced that for the first time, a bank will be using XRP as a bridge currency via their product on demand liquidity. This is the first bank ever to be revealed to be using XRP on the entire planet. Uh, and not mind you, Ripple has for years been announcing that they have a ton of bank customers. That's not a secret. But they're just using RippleNet and the portion that explicitly works uh, to, to help with more efficient messaging, but not in terms of settlement. They're still settling through the legacy financial system with Nostra Vostra accounts. This is the first bank ever announced to be using XRP um, as a bridge currency for settlement. And now, now, mind you, and especially the way that they worded this uh, in their, their, re their press release, uh, the way they worded it honestly makes me think that they're not the, potentially not the first bank to be utilizing on-demand liquidity. They're just the first to be announced. <laughs> and I'll explain why as, I, as we go through this. Um, and also, I wanted to highlight this. I just picked one of these things randomly because, they, look, you know all the Ripple haters and the XRP haters for years and years and years. Uh, well, they've been saying a few things that XRP is the banker's coin, which is hilarious because Bitcoin's the most adopted cryptocurrency by banks on the entire planet. But setting that aside... Um, they, they are simultaneously while well, saying you know, XRP is the banker's coin. Uh, banks will never use XRP. Have you heard Bitcoin maxis and other XRP haters out there in the world saying banks will never use XRP? Well, I just picked a random blog for fun. This happens to be written by a guy named James Sangali. It was titled, Sorry Ripple, XRP is not being used by the banks. He happens to be an Ethereum developer, so I'm going to share with you why he said XRP wouldn't be used by banks and why it was illogical and wrong. And I've been saying this for years and years and years on end. Uh, but before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Now, if you're in the same camp as me in terms of believing that, uh, you know, utility matters and will win the day, and, you know, any cryptocurrency that's going to have long-term viability, it better be solving a real problem. Uh, this should you should be elated by this if you happen to share in that idea, it, because as long as XRP is solving just one problem, it's not going away. Now, of course, we know it's got utility solving all sorts of issues, all sorts of problems for different people and businesses. But even if it's got just one, and this one is picking up steam, on-demand liquidity, and it's kind of funny. I'm going to share this uh, in just a minute or two as well. But uh, it turns out that um, <laughs> and the rumor was true. It was rumored that. Ripple was uh, or had already or was you know, kind of far along in, in working out this deal over two years ago. A Ripple employee accidentally let the cat out of the bag, and I remember um, reporting on that as well. But let me share with you a few key parts from this press release from Ripple. I printed it up and I highlighted just a few parts I want to read. But uh, this is titled, Ripple launches crypto-enabled enterprise payments in Brazil with Travelex Bank. Uh, Ripple, the leading provider of enterprise blockchain and cryptocurrency solutions, today announced the launch of RippleNet's on-demand liquidity in Brazil with Travelex Bank, the first bank in Latin America to utilize on-demand liquidity. Travelex is the first bank registered and approved by the Central Bank of Brazil to operate exclusively in foreign exchange uh, by utilizing XRP, a digital asset ideal for payments. Ripple's on-demand liquidity solution allows customers to send money across borders instantly with very low, low cost settlement and without the need to hold pre-funded capital in the destination market. Um, and, and by the way, I'll even note here, because um, I was like, I, I'm not aware of, just off the top of my head, I was like, I don't think a single bank on the damn planet um, had been using XRP, but I wanted to make sure, so I even put out this tweet that's on your screen right now, I'm not going to read it, but I was even just uh, checking with the rest of the community, XRP community on Twitter, it's like, there's there's not any other bank that's using it, and I appreciate everybody that responded, uh, because some people are like, well, I think maybe this or that bank does, uh, but the answer when I looked into all of them was no. There was a Euro XM Bank, for example, which is an on-demand liquidity customer, but they're actually not a bank. If you go to their website, which is right here, you can see where I highlighted right here. This entity is a non-banking financial institution, so they have bank in the name of their the company, but they're not actually a bank. Then they're like, wait a minute, SBI, 
a big old bank. What, what about what about SBI? Well, no, because it's actually SBI Remit, which is under the SBI umbrella, but they're a money transfer co company. Uh, and then there was um, a, a bank in Canada. I looked into that one too. Somebody cited that, but uh, turns out there was just a, a an article that in theory supported that, but it was a misleading title. And then if you read the article, they say, uh, no, they're just part of RippleNet. And, you know, there's the opportunity to utilize on-demand liquidity. I'm paraphrasing, but that's effectively what they said. So I went through all of these other ones, and I was like, yeah, it really is the first bank. So and now if I am missing something, if one of you actually knows, <laughs> but I think that the community would have, would have caught it by now if there was one, um, which is why I was trying to be careful before recording this video. I was like, I really do think this is the first bank. So if anybody actually knows of one, let me know. But I, I went through, like, bank after bank after bank, and, uh, or, you know, that the, the community was sharing here. They weren't... All banks even um, and the answer seems to have been no actually so it's, it's a really pretty big deal here and and moving down a little bit further in this press release and there's a couple other parts I want to want to read before moving along um, there's a quote from Anna Tena who is the CEO of Travelex Bank uh, Brazil and she said the following Travelex Bank is a 100% digital and 100% personal bank we were the first exclusive foreign exchange bank approved and regulated by the Central Bank of Brazil, focused on EFX of the electronic for, for uh, foreign exchange transactions. We embrace tech to offer the best solutions to individuals and companies of all sizes and for the most diverse, diverse sectors. And so look, as, as soon as we get to the point where this asset class is more mature and people invest in cryptocurrencies that are actually offering utility, where do you think the money's going to flow? That's why, to me, this is like the, the coolest damn thing on the planet. And especially having been in, uh, well, for me, the, the, this November, I've been in, in the space for five years. And the whole time you had the haters out there saying, banks are never going to use XRP. Well, here you go, bitch. Uh, and then also in the press release, it says, the company was looking to deliver a better customer experience to their partners who have limited capital to cover the costs of pre-funding, which was hindering their growth. Through the use of on-demand liquidity, TravelX will deliver near instant settlement and access to liquidity 24-7, 365, allowing them to better grow and scale their business. At launch, TravelX will support payments between Mexico and Brazil with plans to support more corridors and use cases, including internal treasury in bulk, small, and medium-sized enterprise payments in uh, in the future. So they see big, big, big opportunity for the future of XRP within their business model. So it offers them opportunity that if not for cryptocurrencies existing in the per first place, they couldn't do. Like <laughs> these literally business models exist that could not exist if not for decent decentralized cryptocurrencies, in this case, XRP being positioned as a bridge currency. It's a pretty damn big deal here. Uh, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse uh, shared this picture and tweeted out the following on this topic. He said, you can see he's in the middle right here. And then this is the uh, TravelX Bank CEO sitting right next to him. And he said, it's been a long time coming. Working through the regulatory process takes time. Worth it. But I'm absolutely ecstatic to be in Sao Paulo as on-demand liquidity with XRP launches with one of the biggest foreign exchange providers in Brazil. Travelex Bank. And so indeed, this has been in the works for years. Um, take a look at, at this screen grab shared by, by my fellow XRP YouTuber, Crypto Eddie. Um, this, this is showing a schedule for Roberto Campos Neto, who, who is the president of the Central Bank of Brazil. That's him, Roberto Campos Neto. And here you can see, and this was in May of 2020, he was having a meeting with Brad Garlinghouse. So there, there are things happening behind the scenes that we are unaware of because it's not time yet for them to announce this and there's regulatory concerns and it's a slow process, but there's all sorts of stuff happening. They had to get approval through the Central Bank of Brazil, <laughs> but they did it. They did it, didn't they? Uh, and, and take a look at this. So there is this clip, and I transcribed the key portion of it. I don't want to play the whole thing. It was over a minute long. Uh, this also comes from, this clip came from uh, Crypto Eddie, so shout out and credit to her. Runs a fantastic YouTube channel, of course. And um, and she noted that in June of 2020, Marjan Delatine, I hope I'm saying her name right, who at the time was a Ripple employee, she's since moved on to another firm. But in June 2020, she was um, on video here, stating that uh, soon Brazil was going to go live with on-demand liquidity. And so we heard this, and I remember covering this at the time. I was like, uh, 
did she accidentally let the cat out of the bag? And now we know for sure the answer was yes. The answer was definitely yes. And so here's the uh, transcription is towards the end of this one minute and 17 uh, second uh, clip. And she said the following, this is verbatim. We extend these services now to more and more corridors, typically corridors, exotic corridors, with lots of challenges like Philippines, very soon with Brazil. So there are, there is a big agenda and rollback on that. So this is changing the nostro vostro relationship. Bam. So she, she accidentally let the cat out the bag. She knew what was going on behind the scenes. Obviously, now we know that. And this is the same time Brad Garlinghouse is meeting with the uh, the president of the Central Bank of Brazil. And it don't happen, son. It actually happened. Um, so oops a doodles, I guess here. And so, um, and mind you, uh, she, so she left Ripple in early 2021, just another business opportunity. But um, she, she worked at Ripple for uh, about three years, I think this article said. And then before that, she was working at Swift. She worked at Swift for 10 years. And she went to Ripple recognizing that this was just going to, XRP would entirely change the game. So this isn't some sort of fly-by-night people. This isn't people that are new to the world of finance and want to plug something in to the financial system that doesn't work. No, it works. <laughs> and, and now you've got the, the first bank ever to be announced, Travelex Bank, and the first corridor that they're engaging with against from Brazil to, to, to Mexico. The coolest damn stuff out there. Um, and then there's, there's this. <laughs> I love it. It's so, it's so satisfying, though. So here's here's this blog from this guy named James Sangali. It's from September 13th, 2019. And he titled this Sorry, Ripple XRP is not being used by the banks. Now, technically, at the time, the title's true. I mean, there was no indication that any bank on the planet was using XRP. But he was more so getting at the idea that, no, it's never going to be used by banks. Specifically, he said large banks, but it doesn't matter. Um, so let me let me read the relevant portion here. Uh, it's right here where I'm highlighting. This is, mind you, again, like I said earlier, he's an Ethereum developer. So he might be a little bit biased here, but a lot of people hate XRP. Um, so he said, now back to Ripple. Our bank had talked a lot about its potential prospects, but ultimately decided that using Ripple XRP was a big no-no. So pause to note. Uh, he's conflating Ripple and XRP, so already somebody who doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. And then he said, the reason for this decision was simple. XRP is a public blockchain, and the last thing that a bank wants to do is reveal its trades to competing firms. XRP was essentially dead on arrival and had no prospect of ever being used by a big bank like the one I worked for. The fact that you can see such a transaction here proves this point. And then he provided a link with the word here where you can go see the XRP ledger um, live. And, and, and it, it, it's, it's not a real art. It's not a good argument. So look, you don't see what bank customers checking account XRP goes to uh, when it's sold via on-demand liquidity on an exchange. You don't see where that money flows. The privacy is still intact and there's still all the KYC, AML, uh, all, all that stuff. Uh, all, all those requirements, it's still in place. Nothing changes there. You're just talking about what's being used in the middle to convert it. And it, it is hidden. So the XRP ledger is a public blockchain. But again, when it goes from an exchange to the final destination, which is the bank, you don't see who it's going to. And, and also, typically when XRP moves from one exchange to another, it is deposited to shared accounts. So even though the XRP ledger is indeed public, Using XRP as a bridge currency doesn't reveal any private banking information whatsoever. This guy didn't know what the hell he was talking about, or he's intentionally misleading. But, but, but almost all these exchanges are using shared accounts. It's just in a big pot. <laughs> so no, you don't know a damn thing. You, you, you wouldn't know. And also, banks don't even have to own XRP to use on-demand liquidity. So why did it... So then why did it take... So he's, he's clearly wrong. He couldn't be more wrong, which is why I'm just... It's, it's pure delight to be able to report on this and just squash this bogus ner negative uh, narrative, rather. And, and I just, again, Google searched, uh, banks will never use XRP. It's one of the first ones that popped up. There's no shortage of uh, blogs and articles and opinion all over the internet with saying crap like this. But um, it's, it, it's, it was never the case. It's like, why did it take so long for a bank to adopt this, though? Well, banks... Just by the nature of their existence, they're more conservative entities. And it made sense for Ripple to really target remittance firms, which are more likely to be a bit technologically forward-thinking, 
But yeah, from a regulatory perspective and just by the nature of banks and how they operate, uh, it was always more likely that they were going to be along, among the last in the world of finance to adopt uh, XRP as a bridge currency. But this is the first domino to fall, at least that we are aware of. But it, it, and again, if you look at the press release, um, the way that they worded it is that Travelex Bank is the first bank in Latin America to utilize on-demand liquidity. So they didn't say the first bank ever to use on-demand liquidity. That's telling. They said the first bank in Latin America to utilize on-demand liquidity. It just happens to be the first announcement uh, publicly of a bank utilizing on-demand liquidity. So I think they used it that way. Uh, they worded it that way in particular, you know, for a reason. And other banks, if they're out there using on-demand liquidity, which is perfectly plausible, no way to know for sure. But if that's the case, uh, well, not every every uh, customer of Ripple wants their competitors knowing that they're using this game-changing technology. So it's up to the customer. Everybody looks at it differently. So there we are. Cool stuff, is it not? I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.